What's in a name? I'm Father Kurt Hine with Light of Christ Anglican Church, and we are going through To Be a Christian in Anglican Catechism. We are talking about the Third Commandment, question 283. Uh, the Third Commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Before we get into this, let's go ahead and take a moment and pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Okay, question 283. What is the Third Commandment? Third commandment is, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. 284. What is God, why is God's name sacred? God's name reveals who he is, his nature, his character, his power, and his purposes. All forms of God's name are holy. So the names of God all describe God in some way. God is one, but we experience him in many ways, in, in multichromatic ways, you could say. Like a, like a prism reveals multiple colors that are within one pure white light. In space and time, we experience the one God in a variety of ways. We know him, for example, as both merciful and as our judge, as Emmanuel and as I am, as both healer and warrior. Actually, God himself can't be named. He is beyond being named. The ancient Hebrews knew this, um, and the way they expressed it is that they would not utter the name of God aloud. But they would substitute some other word for it. For example, they would substitute Adonai, which just means Lord, or they would say simply Hashem, the name. Yet God does name himself. He gives us names for himself, names that correspond to his activity within the world. Yet all these names fail to describe God completely, since he is always beyond our understanding. The greatest name for God is Yahweh. Yahweh is the noun form of the Hebrew verb, I am, the one who is. This name was given to Moses when he encountered God in the burning bush. This is the highest name we have for God because it refers to his very being, his nature, that God is the only one who just is. He is the one and only uncaused cause of all things. I am who I am. I am the one who is. Other names for God refer to either his power or his purposes, including his incarnation as a human. Examples of names related to his power would be Almighty or Lord or Lord of Hosts, meaning the heavenly armies. Names that refer to his purposes would be God of Peace, God of Righteousness, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then, of course, related to his incarnation, namely Jesus, which means God saves. Question 285. What does it mean to take God's name in vain? Vain means empty, meaningless, and of no account. To take God's name in vain is to treat it as such. So the Hebrew word here for vain means deceptive, false, and without worth. It is an incredible blessing that God communicates to us about who he is through giving us names by which we can really and truly know him. We can't ever completely understand him, but we can really know him. And this is amazing because God is the greatest the be most beautiful, the most true, and the most good. So to take those names that God has given us and to treat them as worthless, to treat them like any other word or, or even words that we use to describe things that we hate, right, when we're angry, is incredibly disrespectful. Imagine someone, for example, who said that they love their wife, yet a few moments later they use their wife in a w wife's name in a way that's derogatory. You, you know something's wrong, right? Something isn't adding up. If you love your wife, you honor her name. We treasure the names of the ones we love because the name represents the person in our heart and in our life. And this is the same with God. This is similar with God. 286. How do you avoid taking God's name in vain? Because I love him, I should use God's name with reverence, not carelessly or profanely. Due to our love for God, we use his name carefully, reverently, and certainly not as a substitute for profanity. 287. How might you use God's name profanely? By the unholy use of God's holy name, especially through perjury, blasphemy, and attributing to God any falsehood, heresy, or evil deed, as if he had authorized or proved them. So using God's name in vain isn't only about using his names as a swear word. We abuse his name, making it worthless, when we do or say anything in the name of God that is false or harmful. 
For example, when we take an oath and don't fulfill it, when we speak of God and who he is wrongly by teaching some heresy about God, misrepresenting his character, or when we take the name of God onto ourselves by calling ourselves Christians, right, followers of Christ, yet taking the name of God upon ourselves, treat others in a way that is unchristlike. All of this drags God's name through the mud and sullies his reputation in the world. Not because, of course, he's done anything wrong, but because we have. 288. How might you use God's name carelessly? Cursing, magic, broken vows, false piety, manipulation of others, and hypocrisy all cheap in God's name. These treat God's name as empty of the reality for which it stands. Another way to misuse God's name, uh, as mentioned here, is magical incantation. We talked about this before in a previous video, but God's name is meant to draw us into closer relationship with him so that we know him more not meant to be some sort of way to manipulate the spiritual realm for our benefit. And also, if you are dating somebody and you don't like them or you feel like you shouldn't maybe continue dating them and that you don't want them to be your, your spouse in the future and so you're going to break up with them, don't blame it on God. Okay, when you blame it on God, you are taking his name in vain. Just tell the truth that you don't want to be with this person. You, you like them maybe, maybe you don't like them. But you don't want to be their spouse. You don't want to make that sort of commitment to them. Be truthful. Don't be a coward and blame it on God, please. Okay? That's the worst. That's one of the worst things you can do. And these are the ways that Christians, that's the way, these are some of the ways that we take God's name in vain, right? We bring God down. And what are we doing? Instead of being reverent towards God and, and using his name as a way to know him, we use his name as a way to try to manipulate things and to put like a, 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 saccharine coating of religiosity over the things that we want to do because of our reasons. Let's just be truthful about things, okay? Uh, question, uh, let's see where are we are we here. 289. How can you honor and love God's name? I honor and love God's name in which I was baptized by keeping my vows and promises, by worshiping him in truth and holiness, and by invoking his name reverently and responsibly. Um, so how do we positively honor and love God's name? So we talked a lot about what not to do. What can we do that's positive? Well, first we realize, we have to realize that we've taken on God's name. When we were baptized, we were baptized into God's family in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we have God's name upon us. Therefore, we ought to live our life in a way that upholds the family name. We ought to be careful to do what's right, to love our neighbors. And when we fail, because we are still sinners, to quickly confess and repent. We should be people of our word, since God is true. And when we worship God, do so in a way that is full of truth and reverence. And finally, whenever we invoke God's name with our lips, we should do so with intention and gravity, knowing that we are invoking the name of, the, of our very Creator, sustainer and savior of the of the universe well thank you for watching if you like this video please hit the like button hit the bell so that you can uh, know when i post new stuff share it with your friends leave a comment below and i will talk to you next week